we have made progress in our transition to living with COVID, but there's still some way to go. There are positives and there are negatives, and let me highlight them. On the positive side, first, the cases have stabilised for the last two weeks, in fact, slightly more than two weeks. Yesterday, we had the usual terrible Tuesday, which is the post-weekend spike, so we have about 3,500 uh, local community cases. Today's numbers are being finalised, but appear to have moderated, but still slightly above 3,000 local community cases. So we have to monitor the trend over the next few days to understand where is the trajectory of the infection, uh, the, of the transmission. The important thing is uh, it is no longer doubling every few days, like what we have seen in late September and early October. But the top line of infection numbers are actually less important what is critical is how the top line translates into the bottom line of how many patients fall seriously ill and need hospital or ICU care or die. Um, that leads me to the second positive, is that there is now a higher percentage of infected persons with no symptoms or mild symptoms. This percentage used to be about 98%. It has now risen progressively um, and now is over the last 28 days, the percentage is now 98.6%. And the remaining 1.1% needs oxygen supplementation, 0.1% needs ICU care. So a smaller percentage of patients are becoming severely ill, and that is a good positive trend. Third positive is that amongst the seniors who are vaccinated, seniors who are vaccinated, seniors 60 and above who are vaccinated, the number getting infected has been falling. At its peak, which is early October, we get 1,000 vaccinated seniors being infected in a day. 1,000. Yesterday, this has fallen to 279. Yeah. Uh, we think this is a combination of a few fa factors. One, seniors, they are cutting back on their social activities. Second, and I think is a major factor, is because of the boosters they have been receiving, which is fobbing off infections. Now let me talk about some of the negatives that are still around. First negative, there is still no sign of cases falling. This will take time. As more people get boosted, as individuals who are vaccinated catch the virus and experience only mild flu-like symptoms, the antibodies and the immunity in our society will build up over time. And when that happens, you will see cases falling, and then we can open up social economic activities without cases rising very rapidly. And then we will have achieved a new equilibrium with the virus. And that is what we are working towards. Second negative is that our hospitals and healthcare workers continue to come under pressure. Our 2,000 isolated rooms are 81% filled. Queues have formed for COVID and non-COVID patients needing hospital beds in certain hospitals. We have stood up 207 ICU beds. 71 are occupied by patients who are intubated. That means they need ventilators to help them breathe. They stay an average of 15 days, but the longest, they stay up to a month. There are another 75 who are not intubated but have been admitted to ICU because they require close monitoring and treatment by ICU-trained healthcare workers to prevent further deterioration. The DMS mentioned it in our last press conference. So the workload on healthcare workers and hospitals is therefore very significant. Third negative the number of infections amongst unvaccinated seniors aged 60 and above continues to be high. They, so this is in contrast to vaccinated seniors where the numbers are falling 
but for unvaccinated seniors, the infection numbers continues to be high. They account for two-thirds of patients in ICU and who have died. So over the past five days, the number of infections amongst this group averaged 127 a day. 127 a day. And for them, the disease is not 98.6% mild. For unvaccinated seniors in their 60s, our data show one in four will require oxygen, ICU care, or will succumb. The risk go up to one in three for those in their 70s, one in two for those in their 80s or older. Once an unvaccinated senior is on oxygen, more than one in five will go on to need ICU care or die. So I hope with the vaccinated differentiated measures implemented recently, it will bring this number down, bring this number of infections uh, of unvaccinated seniors down. But hospitals are no doubt bracing themselves for a sustained heavy patient load. MOH is doing whatever we can to support and bolster the hospitals. If need be, we will open up more ICU beds. The next leap will be to 300 beds. But that will be at the expense of further degradation of normal service and normal medical care. We are beefing up manpower through, from, through redeployment, using former swabbers as patient care and healthcare assistants. We're tapping on the help of SG Healthcare Corps, where 2,000 people have signed up and about 800 are ready for deployment. Our hospitals and healthcare workers will need the help from the rest of Singapore to keep case loads steady, not overwhelm the system, so that we can continue to do our best to give proper medical care to all patients, COVID and non-COVID. 